let's talk to Conservative peer, uh, Lord Daniel Moylan. Uh, good evening, Lord Moylan. Good evening. How are you, Kevin? I'm very, very well. I'm a little bit furious about what the EU's up to, though. Uh, yeah, you know, we know about the COVID, uh, the disgraceful behaviour with the COVID vaccine, which continues apace. Uh, but unbeknownst to many people, sort of almost under the radar, they are playing games with us. Uh, as I just said, for example, custard creams and chocolate eclairs, uh, they are saying have to be vetted by a vet because they've got dairy products in them. Uh, sprouting potatoes and flowers from mainland Britain are not allowed to go to Northern Ireland under EU rules because the EU says they're grown in the wrong type of soil. They're playing games with us. What about we retaliate? Well, it's a great fun idea, but I don't think it's the right thing to do. And, and the reason is that we've, we've, let, we've let the EU run our trade policy for the last 40 odd years. Uh, to such an extent that we've now almost forgotten some of the principles of trade policy in this country. And just remember, while they're playing games with us, the people who are principally suffering from their protectionism are actually their own consumers. Because if a country makes imports expensive and difficult to get hold of, then it's its own people who suffer and its own businesses that need those imports, raw materials, worked materials and so on, that actually suffer, they end up with less choice and higher prices. And the foolish thing to do would be for us to do the same in retaliation for that. We'd just be shooting ourselves in the foot because they were so stupid, they were shooting themselves in the foot. So I wouldn't do that at all. The way to get our revenge on the European Union for these stupid games is to recognize they're a low growth economy with very high unemployment, and that's even before the, the pandemic. And the way to get our revenge is to grow faster, have more jobs, be more economically successful. And we won't do that on the back of making imports expensive. Free trade will benefit us, even if the other guy isn't playing the same game. Uh, what's wrong with those people in Brussels? Uh, I mean, they seem to have a real problem with Britain. Uh, Macron, for example, I keep hearing uh, that he doesn't hate the British. In fact, he loves the British, but uh, he confects a kind of distaste for us because that's good for him politically. I'm not buying that anymore. I think given his behaviour, particularly through the uh, coronavirus crisis, his attitude to the AstraZeneca vaccine, which he's been trying to disrespect left right and centre ever since it hit the market. Uh, I don't think this guy likes us at all. I think what's coming out from the EU, uh, these countries, uh, Ursula von der Leyen and all her mates, uh, they just don't like us, do they? They don't like Britain. Uh, and if, if we spare them that and say, well, they used to like us, they certainly don't like us for leaving their club, do they? Well, I think uh, it's very hard to disagree with you. And I think you're right. I think what they're really, what the real motivation is, they're actually terrified that we're going to make a success of it. Yes, they're absolutely terrified. They've got the fifth largest economy on the world sitting on their doorstep, which if we follow another path from them, uh, and we do it sensibly, uh, and that means being open to trade and actually encouraging growth industries. Um, if we if we do that, then we will leave them behind and then they will have nothing to say to their people they'll have no reason to justify the existence of their jobs their salaries and indeed their elected positions those of them who are actually elected so i think they're really terrified we're going to make a success of things and of course the vaccine has has really shocked them in that regard because they they were certain that we'd be a complete disaster and on the first big thing that happens after we leave and we only left on the first of January properly, the first big thing that happens is we're already racing way ahead in vaccination. Why? Because we didn't take part in their system and we invested brains and money in, in actually procuring vaccines and making sure they were delivered to us and available to the people of the United Kingdom. So that's really sh uh, shaken them up, especially when they're such a disaster by comparison. What if that happens in other areas? What if we're our, econo our economic growth is better than theirs? Um, what if our employment rates carry on being better than theirs? Uh, they're really going to have nothing to say for themselves. And, 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 and the, this spirit of fear, terror, um, uh, is turning into bitterness. 
Yes, I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? Now, I'm being sort of slightly facetious by suggesting that we get BMW to translate their handbooks into 300 languages. But it is the kind of thing that people will say in frustration over the EU's attitude towards us, which, as I said, and I'm sure you agree, is born of their fury that we've left their club and their even greater fury that uh, we are in danger of making a great success of not being in the EU anymore. They have hate that idea and as we've just discussed with their custard cream project they are trying to make it very difficult for us now jokes and facetiousness aside it is serious uh, we need to have a working relationship with brussels not based on all this acrimony how can we get some kind of harmony between britain and what boris johnson would infuriatingly call our friends in the eu well, I think we, I, I congratulate the Prime Minister on actually keeping his cool <laughs> and still being able, and because he's perfectly aware, he's perfectly aware of how impossible and difficult the Europeans are. But he is capable in public of keeping his cool and still holding out the hand of friendship towards them with every word he says. And you might find it infuriating, but of course it's very deliberate because he wants to show that we are still willing to be friends with them. Um, and eventually this generation of, I mean, incompetence uh, will pass away and there will be new leaders in the European Union who actually might say the sensible thing is to have a good economic relationship with, with, with Britain. I mean, this is the astonishing thing about the European Union. They have bad relations with all their democratic neighbours. You wouldn't believe that we were, you know, there's, there's, there are 700 British soldiers out in Estonia defending the EU from Russia. You wouldn't believe that for a moment. They were remotely grateful for that um, or that we were on their side in the world. Instead, they want to truckle up to the Chinese and the Russians, but they treat us really badly and not just us. I mean, they dump on the Swiss the whole time. They dump on the Norway. The great problem, if you're near the European Union, is being a like-minded democracy. What you want to be is a Turkey or a Russia, and then they fawn all over you. And it's amazing how they behave. Absolutely. Do they not see how the rest of the world looks at this and thinks that they're complete, they've completely lost the plot? Yeah, their optics throughout the uh, vaccine crisis have been dreadful. Uh, they really yeah. have lost a lot of status all over the world. Uh, before you go, Lord Moylan, do you mind if I ask you uh, the big issue of the day we've been discussing here on Talk Radio is obviously the possible advent of vaccine passports. Uh, the Prime Minister has made noises that sound like he will go along with them. Uh, he said that they're, they're a concept we should not be alien to us. Uh, he has uh, sort of indicated that pub landlords may uh, be required to uh, need identification proof that you've had the vaccine before you can go in that would obviously extend to restaurants and other business establishments uh, a lot of people are very very worried about this they're worried that uh, a vaccine passport system would divide society people have the right not to have the vaccine not to have the jab uh, but if they uh, cannot prove that they've had the jab they may face the prospect of being banned from all sorts of places, becoming second-class citizens. What's your feeling about vaccine passports? Uh, are they uh, in any way workable? Are they a, a good idea? Or in my view, I think I've made that plain anyway, a very bad idea. OK, well, I've had a tetanus passport and a hepatitis passport for vaccinations. I've had the past for international travel and you slip it in with your own passport and you, you've got it there if ever you need it when you're traveling in countries where that sort of vaccination makes sense. So I've got no problem with that sort of thing, but I would not myself want to see restaurants deciding that they'll only let people in if they can prove they've had a vaccination. And I personally wouldn't go to that restaurant. If, uh, if somebody said to me, you've got to show, show me uh, you know, your NHS app before you can come and eat in, a, in this restaurant, I'd say, do you know there are better places to eat? There are nicer places to eat. There are places with management I'd rather, and, and I won't be coming to see you. So I think people you know, should really be voting with their feet on this. If they don't want to, to be asked that sort of question, just make it clear by taking your custom elsewhere. And I don't think the government should be forcing people to do that. I mean, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but my uh, statement on this would be I, I just find the whole prospect or the whole idea 
of vaccine passports un-British. At one point, actually, Boris did say, uh, it was a couple of months ago, when asked about the prospect of vaccine passports, he said, uh, that's not the way we do things. And I tend to agree with that. Uh, Do you agree that it's not a British thing to do? No, I think one of the great things is we only had identity cards during the Second World War for a short period. And afterwards, they were got rid of, not because the government wanted to get rid of them, because people just started refusing to use them anymore because the war was over. And since then, we've never had ID cards in this country, despite Tony Blair's attempt to introduce them. And I think that's one of the rather attractive things about this country, that there's that element of sod off um, towards the government and when they want to regiment us. And that's what makes it rather an attractive place. So I agree with you. I think it is a very un-British thing to do. Um, I I also don't really think it's necessary. I haven't seen the logic of what's going on here at all. Um, If, if, you know, if cases are low, if hospitals are um, not overwhelmed, if the number of deaths attributed to COVID or following COVID after 28 days is back down at levels like it was last summer, where we had on average seven a day for most of August. Remember, five people a day on average die on the roads in Britain. Um, So if you get back down to numbers like that, then you can't go around living in fear of another wave, you know, the, 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 the sixth wave, the seventh wave, the eighth wave forever. We've got to internalize this, make it normal and get back to normal. And it can't be an excuse for more control. So nobody has yet told me what on earth is the purpose of having to have passports in order, vaccine passports, in order to go to events. Especially since, the, especially since the vaccine rollout ha, ha, has and continues to be such a triumph. I mean, the numbers, the statistics, 60% of the people have now been inoculated. Your chances of catching COVID in a pub are going to be negligible. So it just seems yeah. to me we've reached so a my point... My message is, if they bring them in, don't get a passport and... Um, Don't go to places that require one, and they'll soon learn. Very wise words. Uh, Lord Moylan, thank you so much for your time.